Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? What's up, buddy? Not much. Just, uh, you know, first day of school, it was sweltering hot. And I'm uh, just getting readjusted to the uh, school year and that the you know the the schedule and the grind of things. So, yeah, first day of school with students. We had school starting Monday, but back to Saturday and Sunday, back to the weekend, right? Yeah. Um, something came in the mail for me. Went to a minor league baseball game, and our friends at Barbarian Apparel bought me a red hat. You got it and for I- it, like. But you wanted a low profile, right? He, yeah, low profile. He like, walked all the way around the stadium. Yeah, he he went off. He was sneaky. He went off, bought you a hat, came back. Yeah. It was the wrong kind. Yeah, it was we the jumped box. online. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm not that I can't wear yeah, that. Yeah, I would have just been like, Yeah, this is the hat you get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was but very nice. Online. I'll tell he you what, it. the old boy had him some peanuts too. Tommy or uh Josh Sassy, Tom is his brother. Josh Sasfi had a he had a box this big. Yeah. In that picture I posted on Twitter, <laughs> you guys are eating out of the box of peanuts. It was uh oh. it was a big box. And I was <laughs> I was walking back, I think in the bathroom, the box. I don't know if I told you this. I think I told Riggs. So I was walking back and the two workers were yelling at each other. I was like, You gave away all the peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> the guy gave him every single peanut they had left. He gave it to Elliot, right? I love it. The whole how time. about how about Dave Riggs is just like a like a sneaky hanging out like sneaky funny right like he's he just hangs <laughs> out low key doesn't say anything good one liners give it right yeah give you a right quick liner one oh it's awesome great one liners so catching the Reds the Reds are in a playoff hunt they're in a wild card hunt in the National League the uh, minor league where they let pitchers bat but. It looks like it's going to happen for me. I will probably be, uh, I will not be going to the guardians. I will, I'll be tried forever. Chief Wahoo forever. But when it comes to a competitive team, I will probably switch over to the minor league reds. That's just how it is. Josh. That's a great ballpark. The that great ballpark. American ballpark in Cincinnati on the Ohio river is like, it is really nice. Man. It was really sweet. It was yeah, really sweet. Great environment. Uh, the awful concert afterwards, uh, headlined by Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice, Naughty by Nature, Tone Loke, and you said Rob Bass. Was Rob Bass the other one? He was the first one on. Yep. First one on. No, I, think I, I, I don't Tone think Loke our was. seats helped, though. I mean, we had really yeah. good seats, but they're face yeah. opposite. So, like, when you're in a concert like that, uh, you know, stadiums aren't built for – the acoustics for a concert, right? So no, you know, we were and people watching. The, we weren't watching the concert. We were yeah. people watching. I, I tell you what, the Stocker Moms of Cincinnati, of the Greater Cincinnati area, uh, Northern Kentucky, were ready <laughs> for ready. Vanilla Ice, Rob Bass, Tone Loke, and Naughty Ben. They were ready. They were waiting. They just full, right? Oh, they were ready to go. They were getting it done. It was awesome. They're having fun. Everybody was having a blast. And then, um. I got to turn in early. That was nice about that. You know, got you to didn't get any pizza. <laughs> got to get some beauty rest. Then the clinic the next day with uh, Tim Flynn. Well, yeah. hold on, hold on. Talk about the great parking debacle of 2021. The valet debacle. First off, yeah. Who told you to valet? Yeah, you did. You did that. And I mean, it was the right move, right? Even My though. bad. My bad on the valet. Um, so, so, it, but it wasn't it just the valet because Tim Flynn had a debacle there too, and he didn't valet. He went up to his vehicle and then he couldn't get out. No, his issue was, and he wasn't the only one. There was about 12 others. Oh, there was right? a bunch so of people wandering around the ground. Sunday garage. morning, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., whatever it was. And his ticket and all the signage said, check out, right? So you probably pay at a kiosk, right? Yeah. Check out by the elevators, right? It's connected to the hotel, this parking garage. So you go to the elevators, there's no, no kiosk. Yeah. So they, people was, were, the signage were was wrong. Yeah, completely. Your ticket, everything. And they had no one telling them where to go, right? Yeah. So I felt bad for him. And then, you know, and, we were. And then the guy in the, the booth was like, yeah, I can't help you out. Where he not my just, problem. Like, he like, could have just, oh. yeah, not my problem. Go kick rocks. 
totally could have just hit a button and let us through, but whatever. He saw we had a valet ticket too. That's what's weird about it. He saw it and then our dash had it too. So it wasn't like whatever. Yeah. No, no scams here, buddy. We just went out of the garage. So eventually the valet had to run over. I felt bad for run him. Run over. Like, and we had this conversation. It wasn't his fault, right? But he was. Getting in front of it. Yeah, they understaffed him. They, they, they jobbed him, you know? So, okay. We get there, Barbarian Center, right? Where Barbarian Apparels, uh, it is their production headquarters. Mm-hmm. It is also a wrestling room. It is also a showroom. It's a brick and mortar, actually. You can go in and buy things. That's what's crazy about it, because there's there's not a lot of brick and mortars around for a lot of these apparel companies. Like, it's just a warehouse where, you know, they get things made. It's multi-purpose, right? It serves all his fronts. Yeah, man. He's got all of it there. So that's an impressive facility at the Barbarian Center. Two locker rooms. Two really nice locker rooms, as a matter of fact. Sauna uh, uh, in a whole separate part of the gym three full mats too that's what's crazy. like there's that side room where the sauna is got three full mats and um coach flynn was actually pretty impressed with the places like this is really neat mm-hmm. so that very, was cool very unique yeah really unique i like the setting um it's an old gym that josh sassy's put a ton of work in and uh it's just good to see people like that that thriving in that setting in cincinnati and like we talked about cincinnati's real different as far as um how their high school wrestling goes. Whereas in Northeast Ohio, you have a lot of the teams, they seem to scrimmage against each other. Where More collaborative, right? Todd Haverdell. Yes. Todd Haverdell and um, Eric Burnett, are, you know, they, they'll scrimmage each other. They'll right. practice together, you know, whenever they can. And then <laughs> battle in the state district or the same district or state tournament. And that's wild to me because they really work together in Northeast Ohio, it feels like. Um, Cincinnati feels a little more isolated from one another. Yeah, they've as they're more the guarded, high school right? They're not, hey, let's go work out together and and yes, be ready. It doesn't work. feel like there's a lot of Burnett Barnes type thing. No, no. And the clubs that are that are around here where a lot of people work together, wrestling factory. Um, West Shore and what guy does. Guy invites a lot of people out to defense. And um, there's just a lot of a lot of opportunity in Northeast Ohio. You know, it's got a strong wrestling tradition, but Cincinnati's different. It's just different. And I don't think it's bad different. It's just different. Right. So hopefully so, uh, they, they change, but we have our guest. He's ready. He's ready. Let's let's have him on. All right. Bring him on. Oh man, look at that picture. Look at that picture. Him and his bride. I love it. Two golden flashes, right? There are oh, yeah, three baby. golden flashes. And well, if you put count his wife in the picture, that'd be That's four what I'm saying. Two of them. Two of them. Yeah, yeah. Those two. Oh yeah. Uh, nobody cares about it. My wife's a golden flash too. Right. That's right. What's up, fellas? What's up? Oh, Sean Andrews. Welcome to the Barbarian Hour. I'm going to get right into introducing you because I, when the timer goes off, I'm going to turn into go. a pumpkin and I got grad class. Listen, you are being professionally developed by some higher level institution. And I am actually getting another, like an endorsement onto my license to teach uh, career-based intervention. Oh, CBI program. That's good stuff. Yes. CBI. Yeah. So we're starting CBI at Riverside and I'm really excited for it. And today was our first day uh, back to school with kids and it was really cool. So I'm excited, but let's introduce. Yeah. Was it, was Eric, was, was coach Burnett, didn't he do CBI for a while? No, Eric Burnett is a homeschool counselor, like liaison between the city schools and the court system. And he makes sure that if if there's truancy cases, he's providing services for kids who uh, have attendance issues. So yeah. it's actually a pretty valuable job and they have a, they have several of them. He's not the only one. That's Zab, you're on a time limit. Let, let's get this yeah, show. Sorry, let's go. That's my let's fault. Go. That's my fault. So, <laughs> quick inter- introduction. We have uh, on the show tonight, we have Sean Andrews, the head wrestling coach at Marysville high school, where he was a Marysville monarch. And are you the oldest of four or five? Five. Five. So you and four brothers. Yeah. How many of your brothers wrestled at Marysville as well? Uh, all five or all five, all five of us wrestled. My dad wrestled in Marysville before that. And your dad was your head coach, right? Uh, he was actually assistant at the time when I came through, but he became the head coach a few years after he, he was in his, he coached at Marysville for 32 years. Uh, the last 10 as a head coach. Okay. So he was the head coach for 10 years. Was he ever the head coach? Well, any of the brothers were in the program. All but me. All but <laughs> Okay. And you're 96 grad of high school, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Sean, how what what is how many top ten finishes for the Monarchs of Marysville in Ohio in Division One? 
for it's you. Like, Hold on for you. I know you want to give the program and, and you want to, but I want to talk about how Sean Andrews is done with the program. Cause you've had a couple state champs, you know, yeah. you, you guys have done really well. You have some Ivy yeah, leaguers, I think, I think a lot of guys are, in the NCA, right? I mean, the, you know, off to college, right? Yeah. I think we had six top 10 finishes in our program. That's pretty good. Yeah. Considering, uh, no, you know, we were just talking about it. We were in Cincinnati this weekend in Columbus, where you guys are, you're northwest of Columbus, what, 20 miles? Yeah, yeah, 40 minutes to campus, 20 minutes to Dublin. Yeah, so you guys aren't that far from Columbus. You're, you're close to the Ohio State University. But when you look at it, um, it's different how Division One wrestling operates in Northeast Ohio, where a lot of these teams team up to, like, kind of iron sharpens iron. Cincinnati doesn't do a lot of iron sharpens iron. They do a yeah. little more isolation. You guys yeah. used to be that way, and it feels like it's changing. Is it changing in Columbus for you guys? Um, you know, I think, so I think the changes in Columbus are, uh, an emergence of the club scene, right? So, you know, what Colin's doing, Palmer, what Moran has been doing, what, um, Logan Steber and Colin Moore and Sal and those guys are trying to do, uh, what Jeremiah Weber is doing with beast mode. So now you have like some club models, um, that maybe didn't exist 10 years ago. I think there are certainly some, there's more guys getting together and training in the same place. But I don't know. I wouldn't say we're, it's as collaborative as it is in Northeast Ohio. You know, you don't have, um, you know, one of the things I admire about like Coach Haverdale and Coach Burnett is those guys get together and they roll all the time in the offseason. You don't have like, you know, Kaufman and all the teams at Liberty getting their rooms together and wrestling, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's not there yet. I think it's kind of moving that direction. I think what you probably have more of is, hey, here's a really good program. And the schools that have one or two guys are going and training with that school so that they have the chance to get better partners. How many years have you been teaching now? And what do you teach? That's so funny. I was just looking at my STRS and PRS stuff, you know, just the other day. I was because I, I don't ever keep track, but uh, I think this is year 17 of teaching and coaching. Uh, I teach health and PE or health and wellness at our early college high school, which was uh, like a STEM school. I did not know that you weren't, well, is that right? Is it located directly next to the high school? Yeah. So we have a, a campus system. So it's one high school, one athletic department, but two separate buildings. One is a uh, early college STEM focus. So uh, it doesn't happen for every kid, but there, we've had a handful of kids who graduate alongside with their, with their associate's degree. Uh, but a lot of our kids are getting a lot of CCP credits. And then within our building, very limited uh, uh, electives, we have pathways. So like we have a health science pathway, an engineering pathway, and an IT pathway. I'm just on that committee right now. We're at Riverside. We're looking, we're, it's 12 pathways. It's, I don't know if you guys have 12 pathways, but welding is the one we're going to host at Riverside. So I'm really excited about that. And then there's EMT and all these other overlapping programs. Joe Glavin's yeah. actually involved. He's the career yeah. uh, principal, the career like CBI career oriented principal at uh, Menor. I don't know his actual title. So I, just heard that, I just heard that Joe Glavin's your boss. I think that's pretty awesome. Joe Glavin was my boss. I wish he was my boss. I listen, if any of my, anybody I work with sees this video and they, and they hear me say, I wish Joe Glavin was my boss. <laughs> I might get burned at the stake, man. I might get, I might get like beat with tennis rackets when I listen, come to school the next time. I was just wondering how we got off the rails already. And Jared's over here going, what are we talking about? We're talking about pathways and, uh, it's interesting stuff, we, you know, but here's the thing. That's where education has changed. I'm sure you're the same way. You know, we got a couple of vocational schools that are partnering with us instead of kids going out to vocational schools. Now the vocational schools are coming inside the building and, and you're trying to get both those college track kids and those career track kids, you know, uh, opportunities. We're trying to service another facet of students. It's not college only. We all three might be college grads, but Ferd Miller and Tate Miller aren't college grads. I don't know about all five of your brother, all five of you, are all five of you college graduates? I know all four offers are, but are yeah, all five yeah. Andrews's? Yeah, my dad was first generation college student. Uh, yeah. And then all five of us have at least one degree. I think three of us have a master's degree. Wow. Four of us have a master's degree. Um, but I feel the same way. I, I mean, I got two kids. I have a 12 and a nine year old, and I don't know that college is the path for them. So let's make sure there's something else for them if it's not. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good thing. So, so Coach Andrews, right? I want to talk. Uh, we want to talk about Coach Association, right? Coming up, right? yeah. Coaches Convention. Let's make sure we get that in there. You know, I know Seb's on his time limit. Tick, tick, yeah. tick, Seb. Keep that timer in front of you. But uh, so, so dates. What's the agenda schedule? Yeah. So, uh, and, oh, first off, right? You're the president. 
with Ohio High School Co- High School Wrestling Coaches Association. For those that don't know, so yeah, I, I had the opportunity um, a few years ago when I was really like new in the organization. It's kind of a uh, you know, hey, who want, let's nominate for someone for vice president? And everybody else is you know, someone said my name, and everybody else is like put their hands down and looked away. And, so uh, yeah, yeah. kind of got suckered into it. I mean, but um, no, I mean it's a great opportunity to 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 serve coaches around Ohio and try to move the sport forward. I think we're in a better place than we were when I started in that group four or five years ago. And, uh, you know, when you're in that role, it's, it's six years, it's two years as a vice president, two years as a president and two years as a past president. So, you know, there's at least some consistency there with, um, you know, Dean Connolly was the, is the past president currently. And uh, Mike Blackburn down at Steubenville is the currently the vice president. So, you know, he'll transition into that role, but um, yeah, you know, it was, we were, We've tried, you know, for years, the coaches clinic was uh, partnered with Ohio State. Uh, and then two years ago, we did a separate kind of smaller convention, just of a, a different um, approach. In addition to the, the Ohio State clinic, it was more of a coach philosophy centered. And then last year, you know, Ohio State couldn't have anything. And so, you know, we reached back out to them and tried to connect with them and uh, Coach Ralph and Coach um Coach Ryan and the crew down there were really uh, receptive and, and we kind of sat around the table and said, you know, what, what's the negative feedback? What's the positive feedback? How do we make this the best event we possibly can? And so we're looking at October 28th and 29th. Um, you know, there's some elements that we're excited about, you know, that we're gonna have some high school coaches kind of do round table. Um, Todd Iverdale's on that group. Uh, Anthony Carzales is on that group and, and give coaches a chance to ask some questions. Uh, we're bringing the NWCA uh, Scholastic Leadership Academy. There's going to be an opportunity for, for coaches who want to attend that uh, to do those breakout sessions. And you're still going to have, you know, Coach Ryan and their staff and their athletes showing technique. And uh, we're going to have Ohio High School there and the Officials Association to do rules and turf. And, you know, there's a lot of things that have changed in the last year. So, you know, we think it's a great opportunity. And um, and we were able to to bring the cost down a little bit, which I think that was really becoming prohibitive for a lot of schools. You know, um, everybody knows athletic budgets get tighter and tighter and tighter. So, you know, hopefully now coaches can go and and not just one coach, maybe they can bring two or three coaches and their staff and they, it gives them a time to to plan as going into the season. Right. Is it, there's still gonna be the wrestle off. Yeah. So that was, again, that was an important component. A lot, a lot of, a lot of coaches really like that wrestle off format. So Thursday is going to be, um, Thursday's going to be kind of a welcome and introduction with uh, NWCA and, uh, and Marine Corps. They're a corporate sponsor and Coach Ryan. And then we'll do our, our round table and then that'll be followed by Russell Offs. That's awesome. So Scarlet and Gray match. They, they, they do the Scarlet and Gray match at the Ohio Coaches Association Convention, right? Yes. It's actually really sweet. I used to go to it as like when I was coaching, I was like, but it was really cool. Do they still do it in the French Field House? So they've moved everything over to the Cavelli um, Center. So uh, you know, it gets a chance for for coaches to see the, the facility that that they built, and um, hopefully, you know, everybody's healthy because there are some real, really tight matches. I think you're going to see in that Ohio State lineup. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, that's an opportunity for coaches, for Ohio fans and coaches to to see what the lineup's going to look like. 165, first one that comes to mind. 165 will be a war. <laughs> you got a returning All American and Ethan Smith, and uh, hopefully Carson Carshall is healthy, right? Like right. that one just jumps right out at me. And then obviously 141. Yep. Emilio yep. uh, and Echemendia. Yeah, Echemendia and Demilio, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then it kind of depends on where they're forecasting. Like, you know, this is just me talking. I don't know anything. But, you know, where does, where does uh, Gavin Hoffman and Rocky Jordan and Car- and uh, Caleb Romero and how does that's, that's three guys for two weights? And Wow. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Wow, they could have a Champaign County hoedown brawl between Romero and uh, Rocky Jordan. Did that happen? That might have happened three years ago. It I did. Feel, I, it did. I it like did. It was Rocky not very, won like one nothing or something. Yeah, like that. that's one of those like they wrestled too much in the room, and so yeah. you, you know, it's not what you'd think it would be. It could be no. fireworks, but they're just they know each other and they've been wrestling since they're little guys too. Right, for sure. Okay, so you guys do this. Um, you do a lot of, you service a lot of the, the coaches in Ohio, provide guidance. And something you guys really did that impressed me was you took the ball and ran with the state duels. It, it had no home. OHSA abandoned it because of COVID. I think they actually just abandoned it for whatever. Yeah, I think they used, I think COVID became a, a, an opportunity for them to displace themselves from something that wasn't profitable anyway, the way the, mo- the model that they were doing. So we're, we were excited to bring it back and we, we were able to expand it this year. So we're really excited. Their model was horrible. 
their model was horrible. Actually, their model could have been great, but the finals were horrible. How about that? The finals were not. It started at like seven o'clock on a Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bizarre. That part, that part. You know, I think um, the one thing that's been very telling, right? I mean, they just came out and announced the state tournament location for next year. You know, it's going to be back in the Shot State Center. But what's become clear between the state duels and this individual state tournament is that um, a lot of it comes down to Ohio State University. And so, you know, I think if you ask the general coaches, they want those events to be on that campus. It's centrally located, but they're a very difficult partner for Ohio High School to work with. And so I think you're seeing that when you see what the finals are Sunday at seven at seven o'clock at night for the state duels. When you see the individual state tournament is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, instead of Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's you know, they have the facilities and they have the ability to say, well, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. And there's really nowhere else to land. And so they kind of hold all the cards. And, um, you know, I, I think Ohio High School is trying to do the best they can on the individual side. But yeah, on the state duels, we're excited. We, we were able to uh, include the way we, the model we did last year included um, 30, no, 16 teams per division. No, 32 teams per division. And this year we're going to 64 teams per division. Uh, and so, so they'll host those first rounds into a, like a bracketed quad, uh, at a, at whoever the highest seeded um, host school is. And then where the finals will be at, back at St. Ed's for Division I, uh, Division II moved to Louisville, and Division Three stayed up for sales. And then uh, for the first time, they're going to do a girls' state duels, uh, and that's going to be at Marysville. Nice. Love it. That's awesome. So with that, do you anticipate – keeping that a few more years is the talks going back to what you say you know, not even so when, I, when I talked to Tyler Brooks you know the, the part of the issue is um outside of football and football just went back the other direction they don't have a limited postseason for any other sport it's it's everybody's in the pool mm-hmm. and so that was why they went with the model that they did on the state duels previously and and I think that's why they you know they the financially it was hard to maintain because you had everybody in it you know, we've, I think even at eight teams per district side is still, I mean, there's going to be some lopsided eight versus one matches. Right. Um, but at least those people who are doing that are going to get two matches, right? They're going to, winners are going to wrestle, losers are going to wrestle. And so um, that's their big hangup. They didn't feel comfortable having a, a model that include everybody. And, uh, and there's some coaches around the state that don't like that we used previous year's results to select the pool right. for the next year's event. But I don't know how else they, to do it. What they want you to do. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> they, lots want of criticism. You, they want you to go off Josh Lowe or Burrow fans rankings. What they want. Uh, you know, if there are some many, there, I'm being serious. Yeah. Like, if you're getting yeah. that many in the mix, right. It, it's yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're getting darn near close. If not yeah. on the target of, Oh, oh, oh sorry. Um, uh, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No. So I think that that's part of where we were able to say, well, that we don't have to follow that model. And what I started to say was football was the only one that didn't have everybody in the pool. And now they just gone to where everybody's in the playoffs. And so uh, it's kind of counterintuitive to what they do with the rest of their sports at Ohio high school. What's your thought? I mean, it's kind of far fetched, but you know, the football model, right. The excitement of computer points every week, you know, is that, I mean, I believe I, we briefly talked about this, but it's something, you know, bring back dual excitement for a wrestling where you take, think, you kind of, you know, you have take eight duels and you, you have, put in a system, right? The system's there and you plug it into that system, then that's your playoff, you know, field, right? Yeah, I love it. I think it's a great idea. I just think it's, uh, it's getting, you know, there's gotta be give, if you're going to go that model, you got to have other coaches got to give up a little bit of their schedule, right? I mean, there are some coaches in the state who only wrestle the minimum required duels because they want to be in tournaments, right? you know? And again, I guess in some ways that's self-selecting out of the state duels process. Um, but I think that's the give and take. If you say, hey, we're going to go this this direction and we're going to say strength of schedule and, and you're going to wrestle these eight duels in December or December in the first two weeks of January. And then we're going to have, you know, these these ranking points and then it's going to come out, you know, end of January is going to be the first is the final eight or whatever. I think it's a really uh, great idea. It's just having someone put that together. And, and right now, you know, again, to be fair to Ohio High School, Tyler Brooks has been a really great partner for us on the wrestling side of things. And as they've restructured, he went from being in charge of like two sports to six. Right. And he's got some, three, you know, so three times as much on his plate right now. And yeah, that's not something he's at least on. Priority, so, right? yeah. I don't think people understand that the OHSA is private, it's not a public entity. Yeah. 
Right. Do you think do you think people they don't understand that, do they? No, I agree. I think I think they believe it's because it's working with public schools. So they they identify it as a public institution. Right. And what's crazy is <laughs> where they should be like the aha moment for a lot of people is, you know, only like under five percent of the schools in Ohio are like private or parochial. Right. 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 Like something crazy, some crazy number like that. Right. But they're, they have so much athletic success you would think people would be like, oh, wait, there's a bunch of bi- private Catholic schools, right? Not mm-hmm. all Catholic, but they're all winning state titles a lot. You know, sometimes over half the state football champions are, are privates, right? Yeah. Right. Everybody thinks that St. Paris Graham is private. It's <laughs> actually a public town. But th- I think that there's a lot of confusion there. That's like, yeah. it's almost like a similar type of confusion, I would think, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. People are just uninformed, right? They just, they just don't know. So, What's wild about to me is this coaches association. Uh, you guys do a lot in Ohio. You do a lot to, to foster the growth of the sport. And I think that the, the direction I like to look at is you guys are really uh, big into, you know, girls wrestling growing in the state of Ohio. You know, uh, I think a testament to that is starting the duels, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, that was, I think in, in some ways it kind of gave the association some purpose, to be honest with you. You know, it kind of predates my uh, time in the committee. Um, I was able to join when Dominic DeSavado became vice president, created a vacancy within the, our central district rep, representation. Uh, but that was right around the same time that that group, it was, a, it was Vanessa Oswald, it was Dominic DeSavado, it was George Shore, it was the guys from USA Ohio. Um, and they got in a room and said, how do we bring this forward? How do we start building this? And so it, it was a reason for, the state association to take a more active role in doing something within the state. And then that's, you know, once we were able to do that two years ago, then that springboard into, well, look, look what we're able to do now, the state. And again, part of that in between time is remember the state duels were run by the state association for a really long time. Like it was an association event. And then Ohio high school took it over in 2011 or 13 or 15 or whatever, whatever the year was. So again, that was kind of the the thing that the state association took on and did, and it went away and there, there really wasn't a lot, for, for those reps and individuals to do. And um, so that kind of reinvigorated that group. And then there was some success there. And then it was, hey, well, let's make sure the state duels continue to happen. That's a great event. And, you know, and I, I'm hopeful that as girls wrestling grows, the Ohio High School takes it off our plate, right? And then now what do we do next? What do we can do to continue to build um, just wrestling in general? Because I think that's one thing I've heard from a, a you know, constructive feedback is, it's not the girls state coaches association. So the Ohio wrestling coaches association, and let's make sure that we are not only focusing on the girl side of it. Um, and so I think, I think you'll see that. I think, you know, there's always going to be things that need to be done. Um, you know, got, got a lot of, a lot of feedback uh, on the late change of weight classes for next year, you know, and so that's something we try to relay that to let's hear some of that feedback. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, am I wrong? No. <laughs> Let's stick on the girls, though. Real, real quick. No, the girls. Yeah, I want to stick with the, girl, the girl, oh, right. girls. The girl talking girls. We'll they, come back. Right, to that, that was your focus, right? And then COVID yeah. comes in, and then you guys, you know, you're all volunteers, obviously, trying to make things happen. So you, you get, you know, you know, get duels going back, right? And now you're being being told, right, three years of financials for the girls, right? So that would right. put us 2023, potentially sanctioned right what you know if you're betting um, on- yeah yeah if this year's 21 22 and, and they and everything checks the box 23 would be yep. potentially i mean if you're a betting man you know if you're yeah. all things seem to point that direction you know i i try to be cautious cautiously optimistic and not sway, sway too much you know the the pendulum of emotion there um i think you know, you look at boys volleyball as a comparable like they've been they've been working for a lot longer than three years to become sanctioned. And so I think sometimes when you're in the middle of it and you see the possibilities and you see the reactions from these girls who have that finally have the chance to compete, you, you just say, oh my gosh, this needs to happen right now. And it does, but you also have to have the 30,000 foot view and say, what's the process and, and not get too far ahead of it and not assume that it's gonna happen. So I would say, yes, everything looks to point to that direction, but until someone says this is gonna happen, um, I won't, you know, I, I'm just cautiously optimistic. That's the one nice thing that, um, when we met with Doug Ute, you know, he said, if, if things are going the right direction, they want to be able to announce it at the girls state tournament, right. Or at the boys state tournament, which is three weeks after the girls state tournament to be able to, you know, they're not waiting until the following August. They want to be able to say, Hey, we're, everything's in line. 
And now you got a year to know that this is good, this is coming and, and really build momentum around it. So again, our, our conversations have all been great. Um, in the end, one of the issues was there was never a, a real process that had been adopted or in place uh, for adding it for adding a sport. And then, you know, Brian Nicola has been a huge advocate and Vanessa Oswald, you know, they talk about it all the time. These these girls are already Ohio high school athletes. Right. They're already right. rostered. They're already entered on track wrestling's, you know, oh, roster. They're already, you know, going through all the eligibility process. The only thing's missing is, is a girls only state tournament. And so, uh, I, I, like I said, I, I'm with you. I think 2023 is the, is the year. Um, but you know, until, until they say it, you know, I'm going to be a little reserved, right. you know, I'll, and maybe not 2023, but has there been conversation? What is the end goal? Is it their own standalone tournament? Is it wrestling alongside of the boys at the shot or what's kind of the end you know, has there been those conversations? Yeah, the conversations have, have, have played to both of those, right? One is, all right, attendance numbers at the shot have been down. How, how much more time do you need to fit that into the program? I mean, um, you know, Zeb has been leading the charge on paperless brackets, and why do we still have a guy carrying a bout sheet from the table to the it's to incredible. manually score, right? Dude, it's so, incredible. Yeah. I, come on. So, so if, if you were to we we make things more efficient, how much time would you need? How many more mats would you need? How, how many more days would you need to fit the girls in there? Uh, but then there's a lot of other folks who said, wow, the, you know, the girls state tournament at Hilliard Davidson two years ago was electric and you sold out a gym and it had an amazing feel to it. So, you know, when is the right time to make that switch? You know, what, what is affordable, you know, from the financial side for Ohio high school and what's the best from an event standpoint. And, and I think both, or have, have merits to them. And I, so I don't know that you, I think you probably look and see how this year plans out. You know, what is, what does COVID do to attendance this year? You know, we're seeing that a little bit with football games right now, but you know, what does the winner look like? What does the state girl state tournament look like? Can Davidson hold it? You know, if you've got 16 girls in a bracket, I mean, it's kind of like a district tournament, you know? Um, so I don't know that the end goal is clearly said, this is the path we want to be. I think it's just, again, all those things are still kind of up in the air and, and they're going to wait and see, how this year plans out and it may be a five-year plan that for the first three years it's going to be standalone and then year four they're going to try to move it to one of those other places what's amazing to me is the amount of uh interest there is like you said that the girls are already rostered right they're already athletes they're already they're already ohsa athletes they've already got everything and it was crazy to hear uh coach airs right because his he, him and his wife and his daughter were a big part of sanctioning in New Jersey. Right. Yeah. And it did she win. I think she won. Chloe Ayers won three state titles in Jersey. Yeah. You know, like it, it so, you know, people, and I think we have that, like you keep saying uh, Vanessa as well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's a big champion of it. Right. You say Brian Nicola too. Is that another one? Yeah. Yeah. So Brian and Vanessa are the coaches at Old Tangy Orange. So they kind okay. Of and then I know I, George Shore obviously is big into it. His daughter's the first state place in the history of Ohio. Yep. They were, they won the team champ, the, the girls teach team championships two years ago, didn't they? Yeah. Yep. So they it's like this year. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're pretty good. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, so, I mean, I think we've got momentum moving forward and um, we have two youth wrestlers, two girl youth wrestlers that are in Incredible, right, Jared? Oh, oh, they're yeah, at OEC. Listen, are you talking about Lyric? Lyric, Hatzer. Yeah, yeah, my, my son Talia wrestled. Her. Yeah, my, sir, my, my son wrestled Lyric uh, for twelve seconds a couple years ago. What did what you hit him with? Arm spin. She arm spun him. Yep, yep. He didn't know what I happened. Mean, he kind of got up and went, like, what, "What just happened to me?" He didn't know what hit him. She's aggressive. She's really good. Yeah, she's sure. like really good. Yep. And Talia Guntram, right from Steubenville. Yeah, she's Talia she's Guntram's not. crazy though, in the sense that she wrestles completely different than the other girls. Mm -hmm. Like Olivia, Olivia Shore, and uh, Lyra Ketzer oh. are big moves. They hit big moves. Yeah, like a lot of big moves. Like you just said, your son got arm spun. What is she? She told me she's a, I think, spladel. I think is what she said. She told and you that when? Where'd she tell you that? I think at the uh, the combine, she walked up and told me. She's like, "You're saying that because the Deer Wester girl is a chin whipper. She does. Yeah. She's big into the chin whip, and they hit these big moves. Like you got to be powerful to hit those moves and explosive. Like you're saying, Sean, you're not just arm spinning everybody. No, you're just not doing that. I mean, you got to be quick. Yeah, you got to know position. Like that's tough to do. And she's youth, yeah. right? Yeah. But Guntram is just like solid. 
She's really long and lanky. Yep. And she's just like a freak athlete. She's an incredible athlete, right? Yep. Jared, would you agree with that? hundred <laughs> percent. She's like one of the best athletes. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen like the, she reminds me of the old, uh, the blade sisters kind of. Yes. 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 She Russell's a lot like them too. Right. Um, well, well, and that's, I mean, and that's the other piece of her. Like we're talking about Ohio, but you look at what the junior world team just did on the girl's side. You look at the, what that just happened with the Olympics. Like there is momentum on the women's side of the sport. Unlike, and maybe it's because I'm involved with it now, like having a girl's program at Marysville, but I don't remember there ever being that level of attention. And so it's like, it's a perfect time for Ohio high school to, to connect to it, in my opinion, because there's so much momentum around it. So not much just in Ohio. So much, you know what I mean? Like you're saying, not just in Ohio. I mean, if you look, uh, Tamara Mons a stock, right? Mm-hmm. She's the first, I talked to Kenny Monday about this. She's the first black woman yeah. ever in the history of earth and the Olympics to win an Olympic title in women's wrestling. Did yeah. you guys know that? I did. That's crazy. Right? Like, because he was the first black man to do it. Yeah. But um, the thing with Tamara's uh, gold medal match, it, she, her opponent was from Africa, right? So it was going to happen regardless. It's going to happen but, either way. Yeah. But it's going to happen either way. Yeah. But the crazy thing is just like, that blows my mind to think that, it, you know, it took till 1988 for, for men's freestyle and 2021, 2020, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. For, for women's freestyle. And, and I know women's freestyle is, is new. What 2004 was her first year in the Olympics, right? Sean yeah. Mons was a coach. Remember? We covered that, right? Don't we, we got to keep moving. We got to plow forward. Right, let's keep Whenever moving. Sean, things, what, we what do you want from like me? A, when you bring these things up that are like tangible I mean, things, hey, what before, do you want? Before we go forward though, Jerry, I, I think one of the things that, that is like, hasn't been talked about a lot. And I'm again, this is going to just be connecting it back to like what I do on a daily basis is the willingness from what I hear on the men's freestyle side, the way they, they did their training camps together and the, the willingness to kind of go across the aisle, if you will. And, and for those two teams and groups to work together, like that's the model that needs to be talked about more because I will tell you, like, I love what I do. I've coached a boys team. I have a girls team. Uh, that doesn't always, they don't always play nice together. You know what I mean? Like there is, there's this, um, uncomfortable competitiveness between some of those groups so like i think that's where maybe the guys side on the international side like having them talk about listen no one's saying that tamara mensa is beating kyle dake right but the fact that they can still both have success at the same time um i think that's gonna that, that there's still a learning curve there on the athlete side i think there's a lot of coaches we're really athletes and coaches, push. right? Some of these young coaches that don't get it, like, you know, they're elevating, elevating the sport, bringing eyes on the sport instead of taking the spotlight away from them guys. Right. Right. Don't you think guys, we could put a lot of that on, on, um, on uh, Terry Steiner yeah. and we could put a lot of that on Bill Zadek because those two guys, if you, those guys are real laid back guys, Have you ever met those guys, they're kind of like, they're quiet guys, right? They're laid back guys, but I think they really get it. I think both of those guys really get it. I, yeah. don't, t- don't don't get me wrong. Can they be intense and rip your head off? And can Steiner turkey to death? Sure, right? Can Zadek run you to shirt? Sure, right? But they're 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 real. They're they're like I think those guys can step away and see the bigger picture. I guess is my point. Yeah. yeah no, I just I think I think that's the next level of growth is is letting the guard down a little bit and saying like, hey, girls wrestling is going to help guys wrestling. It's not here to take away from it. Um, and I don't know that I don't know I don't know if that's a common held belief. I mean, you look at the states that aren't sanctioned. Is it is it's kind of weird that they're all the really traditionally good men's wrestling right. states, right? Like Ohio, PA, New York, Illinois, Iowa, you know, right? I was you know, like, right? what what is 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 there some weird underlying thread of these areas of the country who've been traditionally successful that aren't willing to embrace that growth and. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's, I don't have an answer. I don't have, even really have a theory. I just think it's an interesting Great observation. Point, yeah. Will we have another girl state placer in boys in the boys championships in your guys' opinion? I think if Ohio goes the direction that I, that they're the path that they're on is a girl will have to choose one of the two post seasons. So a girl like Olivia Shore can't go win the girl state tournament and then enter the boys state tournament. Once like she, like then, she has done. Yes. She's, so once, yeah, she can't do that. I got you. Once it's sanctioned, because that's how it is, I believe, in like golf. I think there's another or tennis. There's another sport where uh, girls can compete against guys all year because they're small schools and they don't have enough 
Um, but once the postseason comes, they got to pick one or the other. And I believe that's the model of how high school will go to. It won't impact during the regular season if, you know, uh, Lyric hurts or gets it, it hurts or whatever gets it invited to the Iron Man. She could go and wrestle in it. Uh, but when oh, so she hurt, can't like Hutzer would be able to go to Iron Man, but just yeah. be postseason. Po- okay, got it. Got one it. One okay, she couldn't enter in the sectional of the district, right? It, advance to the district. She could if she, she, could, but she wouldn't be able to wrestle. She the could, but she postseason. then couldn't do the girls. She'd forfeit the girl season. Yes, the girl postseason. Yes. Wow, that. Yeah, I mean that. That'll probably. I think you have to have it like that, though, Sean. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that's right. I think that's only right. Right now, you know, and off the top of my head, if we're looking at that, if you're thinking, you know, girls who can compete with guys in the Ohio high school sports period, I, the one that comes to mind. What's the uh, what's the Margaret pole vaulter, Jared? Kind of Stimmel. Yeah, Stimmel. She could actually place in her division. She she jumps. She vaults fourteen feet. Right. It's crazy, right? Can you think of anybody else though? Like that that's the only one that really comes to my mind, right? Did you say she'd place in the NCAAs with that? She'd have placed, yeah, she she'd be right there to to qualify for, for Olympic trials. For girls, for girls. NCAA. For girls, for girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For but girls. you're saying for yeah, boys. I, mean, I, I don't know golf well enough, right? Like I don't know, could could some golfer, you know, like, yeah, I'm uh, guessing there's yeah. probably a golfer. You know, but like, like I can tell you that Stimmel is she's right there. Yeah. She can win an individual title on her own for the in Division Three. Wrestling is just a whole other conversation. It's so it different. Yeah. It's, it's just it's so unique. different, right? It's, it's so different. Yeah. Yeah, Sean, where do you see? What's your vision moving forward with the coaches' association? Where do you see it going? Where's Where's Marysville wrestling going? You know, can yeah. you guys get a trophy? Can you guys get a top two trophy in Division One? It's really tough to do. What's the direction? You know, like whether you yeah. want to go with Marysville or the coaches, where are you at? Yeah. So I, I'll start with the coach association. I think we're just trying to really, uh, I think I like the way we're at, where we're at right now. I think we're trying to really support coaches. I mean, uh, we're going to do some, some, some things beyond just the coaches clinic this year. We'll hope to announce those a couple of different uh, partnership grants where teams can apply to get uniforms and singlets and stuff like that, that we've never been able to do before. Um, there's talk of doing like a military appreciation night, kind of like football does where we have some sets of singlets and we send them out to schools to use and they send them back and partner with, you know, whether that's a specific military branch, but we just want to be more involved and not just be this group who shows up at the Ohio State Clinic and, um, you know, continue to move forward with our Hall of Fame and what that looks like. And so I, I think um, that's my hope is it's in a really good place that all the work that we're doing on the girls' side, when that gets taken by Ohio High School, we keep the same effort and, and intentional um, push to do everything we can to help coaches because, you know, it's a, it's a dying profession. I mean, you know, it's a hard it's hard to find young coaches. So you got to find ways to support them as they enter into it. You got to help keep the ones that are um, doing it around longer. You know, you got to honor what their, their concerns are. You know, I mentioned the, the weight class change. I mean, there's a lot of people who are really unhappy about that. And so, you know, finding a way to be the person or the group that advocates with the state associate or with the state coach with Ohio high school. Um, I think that's all really important to, to keep that momentum going on the Marysville side. You know, it's, you're right. It's tough. I mean, we were the thirds, the highest we've been in that. And um, Perrysburg got us on, on, on the second day, the year that Maslin Perry was beat everybody by a million points. And he just had Dave Riggs on here uh, a couple weeks ago or last week. But, um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, like you're just trying to do the best you can with the kids you have, you know, I, I try to disconnect the ego from it and just like get better, you know, and that's going to, in, in some ways that's going to take care of itself. So it's, it's just like everybody else You're You got to have systems all the way down to the youth and through the middle school. And um, there's, I can just tell you, there's never enough help. Right. There, the, you mentioned the dying, right. Uh, the coaches, right. There's just not enough, obviously. Do you guys partner with the officials at all? Like kind of what's that? Cause that, that's in the same boat, right. Kind of yeah. COVID kind of has decimated a, a group there, but um, does the coaches association work with uh I would say we have an open dialogue with them and they've like, they've been really supportive when we brought back the state duels of making sure they had really good officials there for those finals. Um, they've helped out a lot w- with the girls side. So on the event side, they've been really, really supportive. Um, and, you know, we go to them with things and they come to us, but in terms of like recruitment and retention, we probably haven't um, joined with them as much as we should. Did you enjoy being a college wrestling coach? That is a question I've always wanted to ask you, actually. Yeah, I mean, one or two years, two years. I I was so I coached at Perry for a year. Then I came back to Kent for two years. Um, And I I had a lot of it was, 
you know, a coach with Frank and Jimmy. So, you know, those of you, everybody who knows those two knows that that was an interesting time. Um, but I learned a lot, you know, I, I enjoyed having a role, you know, I was a very below average college wrestler. So getting to still be around it for two years, two more years. And, you know, I remember that was Drew's freshman year, retro, freshman year, you know, I took him and a couple of guys out to uh, Midlands and we'd never done that before. You know, we went to universities, we'd never done that before. And so trying to like figure out what little role can I play to try to move the needle? Uh, Cause I didn't have any crazy credentials. You know, it was just, I was in the right place at the right time. I was a grad assistant uh, in the health ed department. Uh, and there was just this small extra stipend that Franken had never reached out to anybody to try to fill. And so since I was already on campus, you know, it worked out. So I, I loved every second of it. Uh, I actually thought I wanted to work in a college athletic department when I graduated, not necessarily coaching, but, you know, it didn't pan out. And, and, and I used my degrees and uh, I love, love teaching for the last 17 years. But, yeah, I really enjoyed those two years. Because it's crazy because so many people think they want to coach in D1 until they coach in D1. Well, you wanted to stick with it. Did you think you, is it was, you were like, yeah, I want to stick with this. I want to do this. No, I I guess I went into it. I wasn't naive enough to believe that I was, had the coaching chops at the time, whether that was self-confidence or the reality of, I mean, again, everybody talks about wrestling is one of those few places, you know, uh, Nick Saban and, and uh, Ryan day weren't like all American uh, football players. Right. But they got in the coaching side of it. Nick Saban's a golden flesh. That's why I, that's why I dropped it. That's why I said that. What's day. Where's day from? Uh, I actually don't even know. I don't even know. It's crazy because so many of those college, those higher level college but, and even you know pro I mean, like, guys, they weren't they weren't high level. Right. But wrestling's different, right? Wrestling, you you get the job because you have the credentials. And so I knew that, you know, um, in fact, if I hadn't coached at Kent, I probably would have back, went back and coached with Dave at Perry for a couple of years and, and been a GA teaching, you know, winning combinations that the health that, you know, that all the athletes had to take. It was a in one credit hour class and get my master's. And I probably would have been, went back down and helped David Maslin Perry. But, um, you know, I had the opportunity. It was, a, it was right there. And, you know, I got to wrestle with Tomas Rodriguez every day. And so angry. No, thanks. He used oh, to get man. so angry. Um, oh man. I, and, uh, I think he lifts weights. University of New Hampshire. University of New Hampshire, Ryan guess Day. What, guess what position? Uh, he was a Left uh, punter, <laughs> quarterback, and linebacker for the Wildcats. <laughs> I love it. So, I love it. And Tomas now the guy's Rodriguez. running a billion dollar a year industry. Yeah. But Tomas, who else do you roll with, Sean? Who was it? Uh, Jim Sweater. Oh, big Jim. Love that guy. Great guy. I think Sweater moved to Hawaii. Oh, I don't good know for, for sure, but I see him in Hawaii a lot. Good for him. I love uh, that guy. Really good guy. Good, good dude. Oh man, Sean, you, you, yeah, it was a golden era of golden flashes for you. And your degree is, is health and PE or is that what your master's is in? What's so your my undergrad? undergrad was, my undergrad was elementary ed back then. That was grades one through eight. And then my master's was health education and promotion. And I picked up a health ed license during that time. So and did you I, teach a year at Perry then at Maslin Perry? So I did my student teaching in the fall. So I had, that was my fifth year. So I could have wrestled my fifth year, but I just did my student teaching. I was going to graduate. So I did my student teaching, student teaching at Perry for a year and or for a semester in the fall, started coaching. And then I got on as a long-term sub from, I subbed various classrooms, but then in a long-term sub in kindergarten of all places for wow. the last three months of the year. I love it. Never again. <laughs> you never were a again. kindergarten teacher for three in, months? Dude, you were was, at, oh, uh, kindergarten. I got some, right. I got some off air stories that, uh, yeah, but you were probably awesome. Everyone probably loved it. Uh, I know you were good at it, dude. Yeah. Well, it was all I needed to know that I didn't want to teach primary for my whole <laughs> right, career. Right, yeah. <laughs> Three I can't believe now. you went and had two kids then. <laughs> well, you know, it's amazing uh, what you can, it's amazing what you can forget over 10 years time. Yeah. So my kid just, he's in his like second week of kindergarten right now, like his third, fourth day fifth day whatever and uh Tommy. he loves Tommy. it Ferdan. oh Ferd's okay so Ferdinand Ferdinand is five yeah thomas okay. is three so it's awesome so uh last thing i got for you is how is your beautiful wife doing that's what i was good how's she yeah, she's good she's good she's um she worked she she taught for 10 years um and decided it wasn't where she wanted to spend her whole career and then uh, you know rudis is located right here in marysville and she had an opportunity to go work for them and she's been with them for the last four years and you know, I think she's just, she changed majors like three times in college. So I don't, I don't think she's done changing. 
Um, but she's great. She's training for the uh, children's half marathon coming up in October. Nice. What's the goal? So, uh, finish. So she she started so, running. Do a time for, goal? Uh, she probably does, but I, I I don't know it off the top of my head to be honest with you. She she was training pretty hard about uh, probably five years ago, and she did a ten mile run on, like on this hill course on a hot day. And she's like, I'm never running farther than ten miles ever. I'm never running ten miles ever again in my life. And then, uh, you know, we've, we've utilized children's services some, and we have some friends, friends who've been down there a lot. And it's just kind of a, an organization that's near and dear to our heart. And somebody else in the office was registering saying they were doing the full. And she said, here's to my credit card, register me for the half. If I don't do it now, I won't do it. She's and, got to uh, reach out to Jay and uh, Anne McGee, get some tips from them, right? They're, there you go. they're doing full Ironmans. They're that's animals. They're animals. They are total maniacs. Yeah. That's, oh my God. What they're doing is really crazy. Good for yeah. them though. Yeah. That's awesome. Does Meredith uh, still involved in gymnastics at all? Does she do anything with? Yeah. No, so she, so she when she first so we got married, she moved here. Um, she didn't have a teaching degree, so she went back and after not paying for school, she went back and paid for more school at her Bana University to get a teaching license. Wow. And uh, which is defunct, which is not yes, a school anymore. Yes, exactly. Although I keep hearing that that someone is going to open a spire like uh, MG or AMG. No, what's the I, IMG? I hear there's a couple of former quarterbacks of Ohio State who want to open an IMG at Urbana because the facility and the dorms and everything's already there. So we'll see if that see what happens there. But, um, but yeah, so she was coaching gymnastics for a while while she was doing that, and then once once she got into teaching and we had kids, um, it just you know really wasn't time. But she loved watching the Olympics, and um, right. both of our kids tried it for a little bit, and she was like, I can't watch that because I know what it's supposed to look like, and that's not how it looks a lot of time just like wrestling yeah and that's yeah, the, and right so we'd be time. walking past them they'd be already practicing we walk back they're still practicing they got after it gymnastics yeah. team at Kent State got after it. and I, I mean they they always did a they were good too yeah they, they, were, they were MAC champs her junior year I think is she she were you guys 98 grads or 97 we're 98 grad. I'm a 98 grad Jared's 99 okay so she came in the same year as you Zeb. she's a 98 grad she from PA I forget yeah right outside Philly yeah i love it tell her i said hello she's awesome your wife's an angel yeah, gentlemen it is time go I'm, go be professionally developed Zeb. yeah great i can't wait gonna be super stoked about this i'll tell you how uh, career-based intervention uh classes go gentlemen i'm hey, good thanks, jared you got anything else for the big guy thanks sean no i appreciate it always good